Many students who are deaf and hard of hearing are able to succeed in the mainstream setting when they have the appropriate services and accommodations in place. This video will introduce you to the types of services and accommodations that may be needed to help your students succeed. Students who are deaf or hard of hearing may require professionals with specific knowledge of hearing loss on their support teams. These specialists will play an important role in your student's success. These professionals may work directly with your student or provide consultation services to teachers and staff. Speech-language pathologists hold at least a master's degree and have completed a clinical fellowship before being licensed by their state. Speech-language pathologists may work with your student on listening comprehension and auditory skill development, as well as articulation, grammar, comprehension, vocabulary, social skills, and pragmatics. If your school's speech and language pathologist has limited experience working with students who are deaf or hard of hearing, they should be provided with additional training. Teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing hold at least a bachelor's degree in deaf education and are licensed by their state. Some teachers specialize in spoken communication, and some may specialize in manual communication, such as American Sign Language. Teachers of the deaf and hard of hearing may work on goals related to listening, speech and language, academic competencies, and self-advocacy. It is important to match the teacher's expertise with the needs of your student. Educational audiologists are licensed by their state and most hold a doctoral degree. They are responsible for making sure personal and classroom technologies are appropriate and in good working order. Educational audiologists will evaluate the classroom acoustics and recommend appropriate modifications to ensure that your student has access to the academic curriculum. Some students require interpreters to fully access spoken information in the classroom. You should look for an interpreter who is certified and holds a degree in interpreting. Many students using interpreters communicate using American Sign Language, but some may use other manual modes of communication, such as signed essential English, signed exact English, or cued speech. Students need to be proficient users of their communication modality to be able to access the information delivered through an interpreter. It is essential to find an interpreter that matches your students' needs. To ensure equal access to the curriculum, interpreter services will likely be needed throughout the school day. Teachers should also complete training on best practices for using an interpreter in their classroom. Some students need the assistance of real-time captioning to access curriculum and classroom discussion. Real-time captioning is a system that displays a speech-to-text transcription of all that is said in the classroom. These services can be provided on-site or remotely. Students who require these services may need them for all academic courses or may need them for specific courses only. Children who are deaf or hard of hearing may also require physical accommodations. These will address the listening challenges associated with noise, reverberation, and distance. For many students, remote microphone hearing assistance technologies will help the student hear their teacher and peers in a noisy classroom. Sound is transmitted wirelessly from a microphone to a receiver built into the student's hearing device or placed near the child. These devices should be selected, fit, and validated by an audiologist. If you have questions about these technologies, contact your educational audiologist. Noise and reverberation are especially detrimental to students who are deaf or hard of hearing. Classroom acoustics should be evaluated by an educational audiologist prior to the start of school. In many rooms, low-cost modifications can be implemented, such as the addition of area rugs or covers for chair feet. Noise sources should be reduced or eliminated. Heating systems should be serviced, and loud clocks, aquariums, and refrigerators should be removed from the classroom. Some classrooms should be avoided. These include classrooms overlooking a playground or busy street, classrooms in a well-trafficked hallway, large classrooms with high ceilings, or open classrooms or classrooms with semi-permanent walls. Students who are deaf or hard of hearing should be seated in a place where they can easily see their teacher and also their peers. The educational audiologist will recommend the best seating location based on the student's hearing loss, the classroom's acoustical and physical characteristics, and the teacher's instruction style. The best place will vary depending on the classroom setup and the characteristics of the student's hearing loss. 
In a traditional classroom with rows, the best spot may be toward the front and to one side of the classroom where the student can easily turn to see peers. In classrooms where seating is clustered or not in rows, the best seat may not be obvious. If your student is a good advocate for his or her needs, ask what seat might work best. Closed captioning should be set up on all video media. Even if your student is at an emergent reading level, captioning will support vocabulary growth and awareness of topic transitions. If a particular video does not have captioning, an equivalent video with captioning should be chosen, or the teacher should provide a transcript in advance. I hope that this introduction has provided you with basic information on where to start when a student who is deaf or hard of hearing joins a new classroom. If you would like to learn more, please contact our Sound Outreach to Schools team.